This is lesson 89 on finite state machines. Here's a block diagram for a canonical sequential network. It's made up of two blocks, a combinational network, in which the output depends only on the input, and a st bunch of state registers here. These are typically flip-flops, so you can think of these outputs as being the outputs of a bunch of flip-flops. And this represents the present state, say S of t, and that's an input to this combinational network together with x of t, which is the present input. Out of this combinational network comes the present output, z of t, and the next state, s of t plus 1, which is the input to the state registers. You can think of it as being the input to these d flip-flops, so that on the rising edge of the clock, the present state gets the next state. Now often this combinational network is convenient to divide it into two parts, a C1 and a C2. Uh, this is what's called a Mealy machine. The characteristics of a Mealy machine is that the output Z of T depends both on the present state and the present input. If the output Z of T depends only on the present state, we call that a Moore machine. Now let's do an example of a Moore machine that will detect this input sequence 1101. So we're going to have this finite state machine, it's going to be a Moore machine. The input's D in, here's the D in coming in. Every rising edge of the clock is going to go from another input to the next. We want the D out to be 1 any time we de detect the sequence 1101. So we've got 101101, one, one, so as soon as we detected the 1101, one, one, D out goes to 1. Now the sequences can overlap, so this last one can serve as the first one of the next sequence, 1101, one, one, and we get another 1 out. And then we get 0011101, zero, zero, one, one, zero, one, and we detected it again. So D out goes to 1 as soon as we detect the sequence 1101. That's what we want to do. So we do it by drawing a state diagram. Each state, remember, is represented by a circle. We'll label this one S0. And since this is going to be a Moore machine, the output depends only on the current state. So if we're in state S0, we'll know the output. In this case, the output is going to be 0 because we haven't detected 1101 yet. We'll always have a clear, which takes us to a known state. So S0 will be the state that we start in when clear goes high. Now, suppose the first uh, D in is a 0. Well, then we have to stay in this state because we haven't started detecting 1101. So as long as we get zeros, we just stay in this state. As soon as we detect the first one, we go to a new state. We'll call it S1. So we'll label the input along this arc that we draw from state S0 to S1. And the output will still be 0 because we haven't detected 1101 yet. So if we go to this state, we, if we have an input of 1, we go to state S1. Now suppose the next input is 0. Well, if the next input's a 0, we have to go back to state S0 and start over again. So, we get a 0, we go here, keep getting zeros. We get a 1, we go to S1. So S1 means you've seen a single 1. Suppose we get a second 1 in a row. Well, we'll go to a new state. Let's call it S11. This means we've seen two 1's in a row. And we'll label it 1. So we see a 1, 1. This is the input. And we end up in state S11. The output, of course, is still 0. Now suppose we get a third one. Where are we going to go? Well, if we get a third one, we can just stay here in S11 because we have 1, 1, and we can keep getting as many 1's in a row, 1, 1, 1, 1. We're on our way to 1, 1, 0, 1. It's not until we get the next 0 that we go to another state. Let's call it S110. This means that the input is 0, and so the output is uh, going to be 0 because we haven't found 1101 1, yet, but we get to state S110. So if we're in state S110, that means we've seen a 110. 1, 
Now, suppose we get another 1 here. Well, if we get another 1, that means we've detected the sequence 1, 1, 0, 1. It could have been 1, 1, 0, 1, or it could have been 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, in which case we're done, so we label the output 1, meaning we have found the sequence 1, 1, 0, 1. But suppose you are back in this state and you get a 0 instead, where do you have to go? Yeah, you have to go all the way back to 0 to start over again, 1, 1, 0, 1. Now suppose you're in this state and you get a 0, where are you going to go? Yep, you got to go all the way back to 0 again and start the sequence over again, 1, 1, 0, 1. But suppose you're in this state, you've detected a 1, 1, 0, 1, but now suppose you get a 1, where do you go? Can you see? Yeah, you actually go back to 1, 1, because this one, remember, can overlap, so you got a 1, 1, 0, 1. So that's a way to get to the final state, 1, 1, 0, 1. So this state diagram is the solution to the problem of detecting 1101. Now in the next lesson we'll see how to actually implement this on an FPGA to detect it, but uh, we'll use this more machine. So here's the state diagram for a more machine. Now you might be wondering how the output of this state registers are actually encoded. Well since we had five states in our example, here I'll label them just S01234. We could use a binary encoding because with three bits I can detect five things. I can just label them the binary numbers 01234. So we could have three flip-flops here. If you're in state S0, it would, the output would just be 000. If you're in state 4, it would be 100. So that's one way that you could encode this state register. There's another way called one-hot encoding in which we assign one flip-flop for each state. So if we have five states, we need five flip-flops. And if we label them, say, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, if flip-flop 0, if we're in state 0, then flip-flop 0 would be 1 and the others would be 0. If we're in state S1, the output of flip-flop 1 would be 1 and the others would be 0. In other words, we would just use the one of the five flip-flops being one to indicate which of the five states we're in. Now you might think that this is a waste of, of uh, flip-flops and it would be better to use binary encoding because you'd use fewer flip-flops. In fact it turns out that uh, the compiler will normally uh, choose one hot encoding on an FPGA and the reason is that the amount of combinational logic that you have to put in C1 to compute the next state is usually much less if you use one hot encoding than if you use this binary encoding. And the amount of combinational logic you have in here will determine the propagation delay that you have from the time when the present state changes to when the next state appears here. And that propagation delay is the thing that will limit how fast you can run this clock. So in general, you can run this sequential circuit faster if you use one hot encoding. And because FPGAs have thousands of flip-flops, uh, usually we're, uh, we have plenty of flip-flops to go around, and so in fact one hot encoding is usually what is done in, in making uh, state machines.